Hi everyone and welcome to D&D News. I am Greg Tito and I'm here to say play D&D every day. I don't know if that's going to catch on or not, but it should totally be a real thing. I am excited. It's December here and uh, we are gearing up for a long winter's break where we'll be playing lots and lots of Dungeons and & Dragons. Uh, and by we, I mean me. That's what I'm planning on doing at least with my family and people. Uh, I've had a few campaigns that have, um, I, I wouldn't say uh, that they are uh, in a lull so much as scheduling in 2019 for adult stinks. It is the end boss of Dungeons and Dragons, whether you can schedule you know, four to five adults on any given week, day, slash night to play some D&D. &D. But we're making it happen. In fact, tonight, I believe I'm playing with my group uh, who is still going through Waterdeep Dragon Heist. They're level three or four. Um, and uh, I think they're going to be four by the end of tonight. Um, and uh, get ready for all the fun stuff going on. Um, how are you guys doing? I see everybody here is in chat. What's up, DC? What's up, Oboe? Uh, Jack, you got a 4XL Pixel phone? I myself have a Pixel Dose, uh, which I quite enjoy. Um, and I just got my wife a 3A, uh, which she's enjoying very much. Um, so that's great. I'm glad that you got it. Uh, and Oboe, you should totally get one too. Not to make this the, um, you know, phone recommendations. Uh, <laughs> show. It is D&D News after all, and boy, do I have a lot of fun things to show you. I wish I could kind of just show you my, my what's on the surface right now really easily, um, but I have a whole bunch, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna tease you with a little bit of a... I am a bone claw. I am bone claw. I will claw you with my bones that are made of claws. Santa Claus. That was a holiday themed uh, scary miniature just for you all to enjoy. Uh, very, very cool stuff. Uh, our friends at WizKids came out with new booster packs uh, containing monsters that uh, do not yet have a miniature created for them for D&D 5th edition from the two most recent monster books uh, called Willow's Guide to Monsters and Morton Ganon's Tome of Foes. So there are a lot of ones that you might have wished were released with those uh, books and those sets uh, may be coming to your local game store very soon. These uh, are in store now and I have a whole bunch to show off, uh, which I'll do maybe in the later half, uh, you know, or maybe I'll just pepper it in, who knows. Um, but it is D&D news after all. So let's get talking about all of the fun stuff, including, that's right, Potterboy111, Dungeon Mayhem has a new expansion. I might even call it a major expansion. Uh, it is called, and now I'm going to make sure I get it right. Um, I've, only, I've only just referred to it as the, uh, the um, uh, thing that Shelly didn't want me to spoil on Monster Madness. That's what it's called. I was going to call it Monster Mayhem. Uh, but it is Monster Madness, Dungeon Mayhem being played with uh, six character decks that are fashioned after favorite D&D iconic monsters. Uh, and they all have really interesting names and outlooks, maybe not outlooks, but outward looks that are different from the monsters that you know and love. Um, I'm just going to read them off uh, and I'll eventually start showing you more of the artwork of these uh, here on D&D News as we get ready for these to be released on Valentine's Day. That's right, February 14th. You and a loved one can sit down and play a whole bunch of monster mayhem. Mayhem? Madness. Monster Madness. Uh, so, there is Delilah Deathray, the Beholder. She's very amazing. She's got um, very uh, pouty lips ready to smooch. Uh, Dr. Tentaculus, a mind flayer. He's a little bit of a learned mind flayer with a notepad. Blorp, who is a very cute gelatinous cube. Mimi Lachaise, who is, of course, a mimic who looks like a chair. Lord Cinderpuff. A red dragon, kind of looks like a, uh, uh, you know, robber baron, 
type of take on a red dragon. And Hoots Magoots, an owl bear that everyone loves. Very cute. I love it. Mm. What? What did I do now? I will, uh, and then of course there is a box and a way to hold on to all of these cards, as well as additional rules on how you can play with six players at the table, not just uh, four, as are in the normal rules, but you have rules for six, up to six. But of course, I immediately started joking about how you could add more and more characters and names to uh, all of this, uh, because the cool thing about um, uh, Monster Mayhem and Monster Madness, Dungeon Mayhem and Monster Madness, who named these? Charlie! Um, is the fact that you can add in any of the character decks that you've used with previous uh, Dungeon Mayhem releases. So that could be really fun. You could play with um, uh, Delilah Deathray, Minskin Boo, uh, Jahira, as well as any of the amazing uh, characters that came with the first thing, of which of course I'm blanking, but you get the idea. You can play up to six people, and there's rules for, for dealing with all that if you want to add to the fun of playing Dungeon Mayhem. Uh, which of course I know you do. Uh, and the cool thing about as uh, I think has already been pointed out, the box has uh, storage for almost all of the Dungeon Mayhem cards that have been released so far, so you can't go wrong there. Uh, again, this is out on February 14th. It's gonna be pretty awesome. I play tested it at least once, uh, and I enjoyed it thoroughly. The flavor for the uh, attacks and all the cards for the monsters are super fun, and uh, like I said, new takes on the monsters uh, that you know and love. So they'll have, you know, attacks that you will remember from, uh, you know, playing Beholders or fighting up against Red Dragons, uh, but they also have uh, kind of new flavor for them. Like the Red Dragon has a, a definitely a, a capitalistic kind of flair behind it, which I thought was, uh, was, was really uh, novel. Good stuff. Uh, all right, so that is pretty cool. I am reading chat here and I'm saying I've had a long rest after a bad cold or flu recently. It may sound like that. I definitely do have some kind of sinus thing going on. Uh, apologies for that. Uh, I have been hawking up some good old loogies. So uh, they, they might be a gelatinous cube of their own. I don't know if you know this, um, but like wombats, <laughs> I, uh, when I blow my nose, it comes out in squares. Yeah, that's where gelatinous cubes come from. Just thought you'd like to know. A little lore <laughs> that everybody, everybody should know. Uh, all right, uh, moving on. There is so much to talk about. Uh, Monster Madness was just part of the fun. Uh, there were, of course, some wonderful press uh, that came out about all this, uh, including our friends at Bleeding Cool, uh, who said, D&D announces Dungeon Mayhem Monster Madness expansion. And uh, the quote here is amazing. It takes the game to a whole different level. Get it? Get it, you guys? Uh, there was, of course, uh, more from, uh, well, I guess that's it re regarding those. Um, but there are more, uh, stuff happening in the press, uh, as we lead up to holidays. Everyone's thinking about what gifts to give, uh, the amazing, um, uh, game spot put together. Oh, not that one of those. Uh, inverse. Let's say inverse. There we go. How to make the most of Amazon's huge Dungeons & Dragons Black Friday sale. So this is of less uh, interest to you right now. It just was amazing to me to see how many different articles out there put out the uh, more and more, not just not just including Dungeons & Dragons on gift guides uh, about how to purchase stuff for the D&D &D fan in your life. No, they made a specific one just about how to take advantage of Dungeons & Dragons on a specific day people were writing articles about. Uh, to my knowledge, that's never happened for Dungeons & Dragons, and it's pretty uh, interesting and strange and exciting all at the same time. Uh, Definitely more and more uh, uh, gift guides coming out there. Here's a holiday buyer's guide, which includes Eberron, Rising from the Last Deep War. It's a perfect fit for any group, ready to spice up their game night. Couldn't agree more. There is so much material in Eberron, Rising from the Last War, that uh, you can delve into way different things uh, going out there. So um, it's, it's, it's super fun. I love the... Uh, shows that we have got going on both here on twitch.tv slash dnd uh, well actually none of them are on twitch.tv slash dnd although we host them um, 
Hyper RPG, our friends there, are making the amazing Droam and Defiance Wrestling weekly show. They had last week off, but uh, they have two episodes under their belt, and they're coming back tonight at 6 p.m. Pacific time for a new episode. Uh, taking some, It's very similar to actually do uh, Monster Mayhem. Am I getting it right? I feel like I'm getting it wrong. Monster Madness. Damn it. Monster Madness, uh, in that they are uh, taking on some monstrous personas and... Uh, figuring out what it would look like if they were fighting in a wrestling ring or a ring that was dedicated to sports entertainment. Super interesting. You can get into different fan bases on each of the uh, main characters' sides, and uh, it's super fun. So uh, check that out. It's on Hyper RPG. There's only been two episodes so far, so you're still able to jump in and get a big uh, slice of that. And uh, it was, again, all inspired by Eberron rising from the last war, so nothing wrong with that. Uh, Green Cat Meow says, is Eberron steampunk? We don't usually use steampunk uh, as the way to describe it just because uh, most of the technology that is within Eberron is magic-based, not steam or clockwork-based, but the comparison is apt because it uh, takes a lot of fanciful technologies that we currently have and uh, allows you to put them in a fantasy world, uh, but they're powered by magic, just not steam. So it has a little bit of elements of that whole Victorian kind of steampunk kind of nature, but it is very much a turn-of-the-century storyline uh, and uh, has a lot of themes having to do with, uh, that are similar to Steampunk. So I could see the the uh, the comparisons there. Technomancy is what Etherdark says, and uh, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, congratulations to Axis of Anarchy for graduating next week. Very, very cool. Make it all happen. Uh, I, I love that we got to meet face-to-face -face, uh, so many times at Origins. Uh, so yes, congrats to you, Axis. Uh, love it, welcome back. Um, very, very cool. I just wanted to jump into what you guys were saying there on the chat before I went into some other fun stuff. All right, so yeah, The Gamer uh, also had a Dungeons & Dragons holiday gift guide for a wild new adventure. Um, and of course, our friends at IGN posted a second video uh, that was just as wild as you might expect uh, with Miss Chris, Chris Perkins. No, Kate Welch, uh, Dungeon Mastering for Rick and Mo uh, d and versus Rick and Morty. Uh, the tabletop game adventure set. Uh, they recorded those at the IGN offices in San Francisco, and they literally got their butts stolen. I mean, that's what it says. That was the headline. They literally stole butts. Um, and uh, that's the kind of thing that happens when you play Dungeons & Dragons versus Rick and Morty. It is just out there. But I love that they are again jumping into all those fun moments, and you can jump into them now, too. Check them out. Uh, watching people play... Dungeons and Dragons, uh, especially with the different flavors, has become one of the uh, greatest pastimes out there. And I think as more and more people spend time with family over the coming months, there's going to be more and more time to spend some time not with family. Uh, and uh, uh, I am definitely one of those people who needs to decompress as much as possible. And what better way to do so than to watch some awesome D&D play out there? Uh, you know, I guess better would be to play some D&D. And if you can't do that, Next best thing is to read some D&D. Well, then the third best thing is, of course, to watch these shows. Or depending, you know, your your, your mileage may vary on the ranking of those uh, activities, but make it so. Um, uh, one thing I want to say, because I just happened to glance over and see our fancy Miss Mubot uh, talking about... Um, I got an electronic mail from Bart Carroll on the Dungeons & Dragons uh, web team here, and he has something to say about uh, Extra Life this year. We had a goal. Uh, we raised more than $205,000 last year in 2018 for Extra Life. So our goal was pretty lofty for 2018's fundraising to raise more than 300,000 total for the year uh, for Extra Life. And I'm happy to say we did it. Uh, as of today, some of the final reportings that have been put on there, $305,000 have been risen by the D&D Super Team uh, alone. That is wonderful. Uh, it adds to our um, total. I think it's up in the $800,000 range for money that we have raised for Extra Life as a whole. This is the seventh year we've done it. Uh, together with our partners on the magic side of Wizards of the Coast, 2019, we raised more than a million dollars. I guess now with this new stuff, it's uh, it's it's 1.1, uh, probably close up there. Um, 
lot, a lot of money going towards the uh, Children's Miracle Network of Hospitals. Here in Seattle, we put a lot of our funds towards the Seattle Children's Hospital, but it can go to any hospital uh, that is in that network. And we are proud that our small contributions uh, have been able to um, provide for these hospitals, not only just the, the, the health care that is desperately needed by some of the patients, but uh, to make their time while in these institutions a little bit more enjoyable. As I was saying before, uh, distractions uh, can sometimes, or decompressions uh, away from uh, the things that stress us out and make us feel ill, uh, you know, are almost as important as the healthcare itself and a lot of what our contributions go towards, at least in my mind, actually, I, that's not verified to me, um, that all of our contributions go towards making it more fun for uh, patients to be at these hospitals. But that's in my mind, that's what I think we're doing. We're spreading the love of gaming and Dungeons and Dragons by allowing uh, these hospitals to um, to get some of those materials and make them available for their patients. So thank you, everyone, uh, and uh, uh, I, you know, you, a, a lot of the folks who are in the chat here contributed towards Extra Life. So thank you very much, and uh, we really, really appreciate it. And here's to raising even more money in 2020. Um, you know, maybe we'll even get a whole bunch more donated in the next 30 days before December ends, and uh, we not get even farther out of the park. But we'll see. Looking really good so far. Hmm. All right, um, so that is all I wanted to share as far as um, uh, news hits go. I am going to talk to you about some of the amazing things that are coming down soon. So uh, we've talked about this before. We were going to have this on sale at some point, but I want to make sure that everybody here in chat knows that. December 12th at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Set your, oh, did I, oh, sorry, did the audio, sorry. I was talking over that whole shot, but let me just tell you. Uh, we are still going on sale at December 12th, 9 a.m. Pacific time. I wanted everybody to adjust their uh, appointments or calendars or whatever they do to get to uh, our website that will allow you to purchase those dice. They have a, lab grown sapphire within you know and it's more than a carat large within the d20 the metal dice look fantastic um they roll really well there is a lot of amazing um artwork as well as game information to include the sapphire dragon within your game it also has a thank you note from the DD team for being with us for five years of fifth edition as well as 45 years for the brand as a whole and it's pretty darn cool um, we are uh, gearing up for that next uh, Thursday, so I want to make sure that we get the word out, make sure everybody knows uh, you can still purchase those dice starting uh, at 9 a.m. Pacific time on December 12th. What do you think about them? I'm fixing the audio on that shot. Oh, on that on that one shot? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and the video, and the Sapphire video, too, if oh, you can. Yeah, I can do one. Because I've tried to talk over the Sapphire video before, much to my chagrin, no one could hear me. But that's all right. Um, all right, I'm going to show you some of these really fun miniatures. As I said, they are available uh, now for um, purchase at your local game store from our friends at WizKids. Um, I showed the Bone Claw before. This is one of the large ones, uh, and uh, it is a very creepy looking creature. But let's move into one that's not so creepy. Thanks, dude. Uh, here is a turtle druid. Oh. Hi, Tortle Man. I am here, and he's gonna cast a spell. That, and I just love the shell. It's so cool, and the tallness of his uh, neck. Very cool looking Tortle. Um, these are creatures from Volo's Guide to Monsters and Mordenkainen's Tomb of Foes, which includes Aladrin Elves, uh, the Death Kiss. There's an Allop in here somewhere. I think I saw it before, but uh, I wanted to show you this charming fellow. Hello, I am a troll. I will troll things for you and find some fish and other things as I troll for stuff in the water. No, that's not what this guy does. He's a venom troll. 
I wanted to confirm that before I got it wrong, and he looks real gross. I might want to use this as an actual just troll. As you can see on his back, he's got these like little pustules and, and things. Um, this Venom Troll, bad news. Poison Troll was a good guess. It's a Venom Troll. Uh, all right. I mentioned the Alep, so I feel like I have to show it, and it is one of the cooler sculpts out there. I am an Alep. Why am I singing a song for each one of these monsters? Does anybody really want that? Do you? Do you want me to sing? What? <laughs> Don't make me sing. Uh, this is so creepy. I love how there's this weird form and it almost looks like it's gaseous. Uh, really, really love it. This Alep is available for purchase from your game store. Ooh, what is this one? Uh, I like this. Uh, yeah. No singing. Okay, Moro Silverwing. No singing. Uh, by the way, I'm going to name this... Uh, Creature Boros Silverwing. Uh, now this is actually a wood woad, uh, which makes me feel really nice. I feel like he's got like a nice looking shield. He's gonna use a club of himself to beat on somebody. I really like it. It is gonna be fun. Um, of course, there's Knowles galore in this pack. As um, was it Volos that had? Uh, oh yes, yeah, so yeah. All the the stuff about Knowles and Yinogu and how that all makes sense. These are two Knowles that you can add into your game. Um, there's also some really fun, interesting things uh, that you don't see very often in miniature form, like this one. What do you think, guys think this is? At first I was like, is that supposed to be a dragon shell or a dragon egg that's like half opened or is it some kind of alien thing? Nope, it's a trapper. That's a trapper, ladies and gentlemen. It's kind of like a mimic, except it's, it's a trapper. Um, and we you know what's really cool about this is that, uh, I don't know if you can see it here, but there's like a little hint of a spine on the bottom of this trapper. Uh, but I can, I can really love, you know, taking a, uh, um, a medium sized miniature like this one, who is a Githyanki Supreme Commander. We've had some of the commanders before, uh, but Whiskids is so smart is that they make the trapper, you know, who is going to envelop someone, it perfectly fits a miniature for a medium creature. Good stuff, right? I know. Neat. Trapper Keeper. Thanks, Elwarius. You knew where I was going with that. Um, who sometimes, when you're collecting all of the miniatures and fun stuff that you might like from your D, D campaigns and you lay them out in front of you and people are like what are you like a hoarder and you're like no i'm just a morkoth i like holding on to things and collecting magic items and making it part of my entire persona all right you got a problem with that deal with it i'm morkoth mcgee and you're canceled buddy what no uh, <laughs> TK is just like, no one, no one does that. Uh, yes, these are WizKids, uh, Moro Silverwing, just so you're uh, aware. These are from the Vol... Uh, they're, they're actually, the, the, the title of this is Icons of the Realms, Volos, and Mordenkainen's. Uh, so it is a booster box type thing that you can get four of them. Uh, I just happen to have all of the 44 models here in front of me, so I'm just picking out ones of them that I think look cool. Uh, speaking of, we're getting into some of the fun stuff. They mentioned the different Eladrin elves for each of the four seasons. This one, oh, sorry, the last one, just to make sure that you guys knew what the last one was. Now, where did I put it? Oh, it's a Morkoth. Sorry, buddy. Morkoth. Uh, this one is an Autumn Eladrin. I love the Autumn Eladrin. Uh, I kind of been wearing a lot of uh, the same exact colors that Autumn Eladrin is wearing here. Uh, I'm going to call her Autumn Eladrin, and then like, that's her full name. Uh, not that that is, you know, the type of creature that she is, but this is Autumn. Say, hi, Autumn. I'm going to shoot you. Okay. Okay, Autumn. Sorry about that. Uh, all right. That's, that's about all I can do for Autumn the Eladrin. Um, ba -da -ba -da, all right, Ooh. all right. Well, we're going on a we're going on a theme here. Um, that that was Autumn Aladrin. Here, this is Spring Aladrin. Hi, how you doing, guys? I am. Uh, I'm just gonna spring spring over here, and then I'm gonna spring over here, and then I'm gonna spring and jump closer to the camera. Will you be able to focus on me? Focus, focus. 
All right, that's slightly better. Spring, 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 spring. <laughs> ah. I know I'm doing something right when people are telling me to stop in the chat. That's always a good thing, right? Uh, all right, I'm going to show you one more creepy dude uh, before we get going with D&D Rewind. Uh, but here, this one definitely caught my eye. WizKids has been doing a really good idea of not just thinking about, and I, like I said, I'm mentioning it with, with this, the, the Trapper, of not just thinking about the one that you are trying to, um, you know, the monster that you're trying to dramatize at that moment, but like what it's going to look like at the table. And this one, I think, does that to a T. This is an Al Hoon, um, which I believe is a type of Mind Flayer, a specific type of Mind Flayer that has its own sentience and can cast spells. Is that right? I'm sure someone will correct me, but I'm pretty sure that's what an Al Hoon is. Um, but it has these tentacles, these black tentacles behind it that just create like a weird kind of alien nature about it, which I find uh, fascinating. And it, it, um, this is not part of this set. This was a, 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 a pack-in, but it glows very well with the Elder Brain. Oh, wait, hold on. And then, of course, you can create Christmas ornaments. Happy holidays, everyone. Oh, I'm under the Alhoon. Who wants a kiss? <laughs> no one does, is the answer to that question. Uh, all right, so let, <laughs> let's go uh, and uh, show some D&D Rewind before I show even more of these miniatures as well as some other fun stuff uh, that I've got piled up right here. Um, D&D Rewind is, of course, the little segment on this show where we focus on showing some of the best role-playing moments, the funniest moments, the most sad, the most dramatic from the week of programming here on twitch.tv slash D&D. This uh, one might be a, a little bit light just because we had the holidays and things happening, but I know there were lots of people who were streaming, so uh, let, us, let us take a look and see what amazing stuff happened here on D&D on Twitch. You guys ready? I'm pressing the right button soon. One, two, three. No, this is gonna be great because we are we are essentially unkillable because we've already seen the end of the story. Mm -hmm. Until we get to the train, then we're super yeah. killable. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we win the train, so don't forget that. <laughs> the moment we see the commissioner. In canon. Off, yeah, all bets are off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do we... <laughs> well, I mean, I guess I guess we could just find out. We could just play the game and we could find out how you get there and if you live. What do you live. mean, we? You, yeah. that, what? <laughs> we could just <laughs> play and see what happens. That could be a thing we do. Um, all right. I guess okay, but don't let us die, Adam, or else everybody. Yeah, will Adam, know. that's your job to not yeah. let us. We're like, <laughs> like, don't let us die. <laughs> you're like, this okay. Is story continuity. As soon in as your the hands. game starts, you're like, all right. So I fill up the bathtub and I get the toaster <laughs> and I plug it in and I look right at the camera and I jump in the bathtub. What happens? <laughs> I would not hold you here any longer, for I have seen just what Damnifer has done to your souls already. D'accord, but uh, I have one more request. If we try, and we die, you save Naziah, because you have said that she is worth it, she is redeemed. So take her back to the material plane. If we die here, pff, fine. But she uh, no, lives, or not nothing. I can agree to that. Oleanthus yeah. steps back. Are we now devils, Commander? We are making deals with mortals. Zeriel. Your Commander is, and she sees where the orb is for mortals. Because, yes, we are grey and we are flawed and we are broken. But she is not. And that is worth saving. No, <laughs> not, not particularly towards you, but should still be careful. 
Right. Um, do you reckon maybe we should drop the whole money collecting thing and uh, and try and get on in there? Or there are a lot of locks and a lot of guards involved. I mean, I mean that's never stopped me before. Fine. I mean, it's your call, Zan. You're the one there. Otherwise, we can carry on with the charade and see if we find out anything else useful. No, I think you can carry on for now. Just oh. be careful. All right. You're just standing there casting messages over, <laughs> yeah. over. Yeah. over and over. I'm looking shifty and anyway. There's an old woman pointing. <laughs> <laughs> pointing at the house. Well, no, I'm pointing. The old woman isn't. Ah. Oh. Clever. Yeah. In the illusion. That's very good. <laughs> Best finger coming out of her shin. <laughs> for anyone who's looking to do this. Is that the finger? <laughs> Had it since I was a girl. <laughs> it's a bone spur. <laughs> it hurts like hell. Though. <laughs> oh, oh. On the other side of the door over here. Uh, let's see. Five. In. Okay, the door opens. Philaster comes in. He sees you. He sees a body. He sees a guard. And before, I think before even he has a chance to think about it, there's a flash and a knife is in and then out of his hand as he hurls it at this dude. Cool. Uh, nice. Philaster and his infinite knives. Um, He's very quick. He's he is. He's a quick dude. So let me let me see here. He doesn't actually have knives in his inventory, so I gotta just roll. I think Did you know if you me. take out the L and then the A and then the E and then the R, it's the, faster. his name is just, yeah. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got yeah, that. yeah. If you take out the F, the A, and the T, his name is Laser. So, <laughs> if you'd like to That's imagine pretty. from here forward that Philaster Fast is a member, laser. if you'd like to imagine that he is a member of that August body we call the American Gladiators, uh, I would invite you to do so. Uh, his, <laughs> laser. His unitard is uh, in the colors of the Baldur's Gate flag, uh, and he has beautiful <laughs> feathered hair. Well, it's like blaming it. Okay, okay, right, this, oh. this is this is your mission. What are, what are we here okay. to do? Well, it's kind of my God's mission. We're here to talk to them. Does that mean I'm a cleric now? <laughs> Would you like to join in the worship of a phoenix? I can introduce you. They're really nice. A little hot. Um, or Ogma is wonderful too. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, the phoenix. Orkira reaches, Orkira reaches into her bag and pulls out her bag of marshmallows and offers it to Freely and says, we have snacks. <laughs> wait, is this like a, like, wait, oh, wait, hang on. I poke one on the tip of my sword and hold it near the lava to toast it a little bit. And I'm like, oh, crusty on the outside, yeah. I pull out my collapsible 10 foot pole and I do the same thing <laughs> over the lava cloud. I'm like, see, you're already halfway there. Isn't <laughs> this feet? Well, you know, you don't want to get too close to lava. <laughs> What? So many fun things. Um, loved all that. Sorry, I had to take off my headphones. That happened a little bit faster. Here I am chatting and chatting, not, not uh, doing my due diligence duty to make sure everybody knows what's happening here. So uh, thank you for everyone who uh, makes those clips be known. You can do that too if you are so interested, if you see a really good uh, clip or a uh, portion of a D&D stream show here on uh, our Twitch channel. You can use the Twitch interface to create a little clip about that, share it out as much as you can, and then I would suggest tagging in some of the creators who are in that clip. Um, maybe they'll retweet, get more word out there about what is happening here on the Twitch channel, um, and uh, it'll, it'll be very cool. That's the way to do that. Uh, all right, so now is the time uh, that we talk through what is going on with the Adventurers League. What is the Adventurers League? Well, it is D&D's official play campaign. Uh, well, that means that you can take your, the AL character that you create and bring it to any AL sanctioned event and you should fit right in with what is going on. Uh, we create a lot of adventures that are bite-sized or smaller, um, able to be fit into sometimes as little as an hour, two hours, four hours. They don't take a lot of prep time. Um, I'm actually running two of the adventures right now in my Dragon Heist campaign that were created for that campaign around uh, Dragon Heist in 2018. They're great, they fit right in. All of the creators who work on those adventures are fantastic. Uh, and we'd love for more people to join and find Adventurers League games in your local area. So. This is us getting the word all about that. Um, and are you, are you ready 
to step boldly, boldly, boldly into the Mornland. Oracle of War is now out in the wild, and you can get EB-01. That's the little code phrase uh, for which adventure is which. Um, EB-01 is called The Nightland. That adventure is written by Sean Merwin, and it is available now on Dungeon Master's Guild. Um, and the Oracle of War campaign in Adventurer's League is a little bit different in that it is a 20-part standalone story in the D&D Adventurer's League continuum that's set in Eberron. Um, but what's different about this campaign is that it's a beginning, a middle, and an end. So after 20 parts, it's going to conclude, uh, and then um, hopefully we can move on to other um, uh, areas within the D&D multiverse with which to uh, to make it happen. But if you want a slice of Eberron, join in with an Eberron Oracle of War adventure in your local game store. Um, and <laughs> Here is the adventure description. Actually, there's, a, there's some notes in here from me specifically, which I won't read aloud. The Brokers of Salvation. This is like what's, what's happening in the Mornland adventure story. The Brokers of Salvation pay good coin for artifacts scavenged from the haunted battlefields of the Moorland. In this nest of cutthroats, daring explorers gather to carve their destinies from the ruins of Sire. They'll need all the help they can get. It's no secret that most scavengers don't survive their first expedition into the gray. This tier one adventure is optimized for APL1 and is the first adventure in the four port, port part Spoils of War storyline. Uh, so what that means is tier one is uh, essentially levels one through five for a Dungeons and Dragons uh, Adventurers League uh, character. So if you're in that tier, you can play this and feel really great. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what APL one is, but I believe it is an average party level of one. Um, and it's the first adventure in the four part series of Spoils of War, uh, which all ties into Oracle of War. Um, these introductory adventures are always designed, and I haven't been able to read this one specifically uh, by Sean Morwin, but he is a veteran that does great work in the Adventurers League. But a lot of these introductory ones are more, um, I'd say role play heavy. Uh, there's definitely some fighting and some and some monsters and some tactical uh, things that you have to do within there, but they do a great job of setting up the entire story through uh, character and conversation. And if a, you are a dungeon master who wants to learn alongside your players with it, this is a great way to find out what's going on in Eberron and uh, check it out. Uh, I'm gonna show you the actual image for this amazing thing. Um, and that is it right here. Right? Oracle of War, part one. Sean Merwin. That is one of my favorite pieces of artwork from Eberron. Uh, it is, you can't really see it in its entirety here, uh, but it is an elemental galleon airship. Um, actually, it's elemental airship. The galleons are the ones that are on the water. But anyway, it's going towards a cloud of mist and, uh, with faces in it, and I believe that is going into the moorland, which is pretty, pretty cool. Uh, all right. Very uh, evocative, uh, of course. Thank you for that description, Lisa Penrose. Uh, I will now talk to you about uh, some photos that we uh, were able to show off to you from around the world, people playing in Adventurers League events. This one comes from Indonesia, and it's the country's very first Adventurers League epic. So here's the quote from Ika, the organizer. First of all, I would like to thank all the AL team for giving us the opportunity and the epic module as well. There's no epic in the country where I live so far, but when we get a chance to host this, we are so excited. Here's a picture from the event that we hosted where we experienced Infernal Pursuit for the very first time. There's 50 plus players that show up at the event <laughs> and we're very happy. Look at all these players having fun uh, playing in the first epic in the country of Indonesia. Whoa, that's a lot of players. A lot of new people trying D&D for the first time um, and that is what uh, organized play and Adventurers League is all about. So awesome. Thank you so much for sending that in, Eka or Ika. Um, you can send your photos of your AL group to community at 
dndadventurersleague.org for a group shout out. Uh, let me know everything about your, uh, you know, the local game store, anything you want to show that you're comfortable sharing. Um, and uh, I'll read it here aloud and show off some of the amazing photos of what it was like to be at your event. Uh, we definitely have a lot of international folks sending in their photos, but we'd love for ones from all over the world, uh, including uh, here in the US or UK, Australia, uh, anywhere that you are showing off uh, an amazing event send it in to community at dndadventurousleague.org and I'll maybe talk about it here on D&D News. All right, so I mentioned Dungeon Masters Guild uh, in the last bit about how you can get Adventurous League content, and that's true. Dungeon Masters Guild lets you publish your Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition creations for fun and profit. It is the only platform where you can publish adventures and supplements with the Forgotten Realms, Ravenloft, Ravnica, and other wizard settings, heroes, and more. Dungeon Masters Guild is celebrating the four core classes of fantasy. RPGs, fighters, rogues, wizards, clerics, with special classic classes bundles of character options. Unlock roguish feats, discover lost schools magic, all while saving up to 57%. Go to DungeonMastersGuild.com to check it out. Here are some of the cover images of these amazing Classic Classes Community Bundles, all about clerics, fighters, here's the rogues and wizards bundles. Very interesting stuff. 57% um, is a very specific amount of percent uh, to save, but I, I dig it. Uh, here is also something we love to uh, spotlight, which is all the amazing collaborative content coming from the Dungeon Masters Guild creator community. Uh, there is a ton of it right now, and there's one great title to check out, check out which is 12 Days of Midwinter. The 12, uh, it, this is uh, it's available as a PDF, a softcover, or a hardcover right now, which means you can do print-on-demand. Um, the 12 Days of Midwinter is a collection of Dungeons & Dragons adventures inspired by the mythology, traditions, and lore of the winter season. This collection features... 200 pages of adventures designed for every tier of play for characters between levels 1 and 20. The writers include Celeste Conowich, Jackie Lang, Luang, Josh Perry, Emily Smith, and just so many awesome people. Woo! That does look very, very cool. I love the cover artwork there, too. Um, and it being a holiday season for many folks right now, uh, what a great way to jump in and get involved with, uh, you know, using the D and D to spread good cheer. Um, maybe, maybe kill some some Krampuses. I don't know. It should be kind of fun. Um, I also want to let you know that uh, our partner Beam Dog has Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition available right now on the PlayStation Four, the Xbox One, and the Nintendo Switch today. You can grab it, Neverwinter Nights. I remember when this game came out. I was a little bit outside of the uh, D&D fandom, uh, but I saw that this had come out. I devoured the single player campaign super quick, loved creating. I think I had a, a female paladin character was my main character in the first campaign that shipped with Neverwinter Nights. But one of the coolest things about this game was that it had a tool set. I believe it was called the Aurora tool set. Um, and what the modders and uh, you know, creators were able to do with that Aurora tool set was was phenomenal. I saw people even 10, 15 years later using adventures, modules that they created within Neverwinter Nights as calling cards to get jobs in uh, high profile RPG uh, computer companies and things like that. So maybe you can do that too. Um, I'm pretty sure it's all in there. Um, there are collector's packs as well as uh, you know, of course, Baldur's Gate Enhanced Editions, Baldur's Gate 2, um, Icewind Dale, Planescape Torment, still touted as one of the best written games ever. Um, it's very, very good, set in the uh, Planescape universe. Um, those are all available on those consoles that I mentioned, PS4, Nintendo Switch, and Xbox One. Uh, the Switch version is specifically uh, really great. It's just uh, wonderfully done and, and able to be moved around uh, a lot more simpler than you think you will. I never thought I'd say I'm playing um, uh, you know, a game like this on a Nintendo console, but you know, here we are. It's happening and it is fantastic. Check it out. Um, all right, one other thing I mentioned, I showed you the box 
for from the Iron Studios D and D cartoon figurines uh, last week, but today I want to show you the actual physical model. So this is Diana the Acrobat. This is what you get when you purchase the Iron Studios Collector Edition models. Uh, it's uh, lovingly sculpted. Um, of course, uh, uh, her as the character can be on there and uh, uh, position however you want. There's a well from which you can drink some actual real water there. Um, there's a, I don't, know, I don't know exactly why the bucket is there uh, on its side, uh, but the acrobat is happening. Dun, 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 dun. And then, of course, there is the Dungeon Master. Hi, Dungeon Master. Everyone knows him from all of the fun stuff he <laughs> inspired over the years. I feel like there was even a point when Chris Perkins cosplayed as the Dungeon Master for an Acquisitions Incorporated campaign. Uh, very, very fun. Um, really, really well done. And uh, everybody that saw the Brazilian Renault commercial where it showed the live action versions of these characters, uh, I feel like everyone's nostalgia just went up the charts um, because of the depictions. And here you are, you can certainly grab some of these if uh, this character was important to you. Um, this rat, I'm not really exactly sure the significance of the rat. I will tell you, I didn't, I don't, I didn't exhaustively watch every single one of um, the uh, uh, episodes of that thing. So I don't know, is, there, is the rat significant in some way? Am I missing something? You tell me, fans. Let me know. Hey, buddy. How are you? Do you want to be my friend? I feel like this was 1980s version of Baby Yoda. I don't know. What do you guys think? No? Not cute? He is very, he's very cuddly. Uh, okay, so those are available now, again, through Iron Studios. DC was nice enough to put that link in the chat there if you're interested in finding out more. Um, I showed off some of the uh, variant covers from issue three of Rick and Morty versus Dungeons and Dragons, but here is another one uh, that is out there. I'm not exactly sure where or how you get this alternate variant cover, but it exists. It's out there. Um, very fun stuff. I am uh, all on board with these uh, this mini issue or um, mini series. There's going to be four issues. This is issue three. Um, and it looks really awesome. Jim Zub has done a very fantastic job of bringing these characters to life in a D&D context and some of what uh, this storyline called the Painscape dramatizes is uh, it's coming true to a certain extent where D&D kind of content is everywhere uh, and uh, it infects everything and, and, and uh, Rick and Morty have to contend against that and see how they can right the wrongs of Morty's past D, D characters and how much they failed him. Or at least that's what he says. Um, interesting, fun stuff. I uh, also want to show off um, or let you know uh, there was a, a, a tweet from today from Mr. Jim Zub. Um, let me uh, make sure I get that right so that I can let everyone know because he's working on another D, &D comic book series called Infernal Tides uh, with Max Dunbar as the artist. Uh, we have a release date for that. That is Wednesday, December 11th. It will be in comic book shops. Um, and the artwork that Jim and Max Dunbar have been spoiling on Twitter looks amazing. So many dramatic moments. The entire you know, blood war between devils and demons dramatized on a comic book frame is uh, pretty, pretty cool. So. Check it out. Uh, you should you should um, set your calendar for Wednesday, December 11th to go into comic book stores and try to get your number one copy. Um, as Jim says, if you uh, are a reviewer out there and you want an advanced PDF to read and review, go ask Jim Zub, at Jim Zub on Twitter, and he might be able to hook you up. We'll see. Mm. There are uh, so many fun things. Going on for the end of the holidays, I'm, you know, ordering some new uh, fantastic t-shirts. It's always one of my fun parts of my job is working with Emmy Tanji, uh, the amazing graphic artist who creates a lot of our fun stuff. And uh, we have, I think, four or five new designs coming into the office. 
that I'll be showing off here on DD News, maybe doing some giveaways to make sure that you guys get them going out there. A lot of interesting uh, things. This one was a uh, one that we created last year uh, that played with some different colors out there. I thought it was per, you know pretty spot on to make this happen here for the holidays, you know, with the red and the white thing going on. There are a lot of different color combinations coming uh, as, all, as well as different uh, fun stuff out there. Uh, we're doing new ink techniques such as puffy ink as well as uh, maybe some flocking. Do you guys know what flocking is? It's not that dance move where the kids are doing it with this. I'm a very good at flocking. I'm a flocker. I just flocked for you. Uh, no, that's flossing. I know it's called flossing. Deal with it. Um, but uh, yeah, no, that's going to be really fun. Uh, and uh, I, like I said, I'll be showing them off. And like I said, making, making some giveaways happen here too. Uh, I know. Uh, so I want to show off a couple more of these fun minis in the last couple minutes we have here before we say good night. Um, everyone should, of course, stick around for 6 p.m. Pacific time where Hyper RPG will be having the next episode of Droam and Defiance Wrestling. Um, if that's not your cup of tea and you want something that's a little deeper, different flavor out there, I suggest Dark Lanterns is a show that is on the Dungeons & Dragons YouTube page right now. We're uh, a little bit of a different format. It's not a streaming show. It's an hour-long episode um, uh, show in which the cast uh, plays for a bunch of times, then we cut it up into different episodes for a, an hour long each. Dark Lanterns takes the kind of spy nature of uh, espionage and intrigue that is happening in Eberron and heightens that, kind of gives it almost like a, at least from the intro, a 1960s mod uh, James Bond type feel to it, but still very fantasy rooted in what is going on and, and, and their abilities and whatnot. So um, check out that Dungeon Master um, Gaurav Galati is doing a fantastic job and all the cast is wonderful. Uh, so Dark Lanterns on D&D YouTube page. Check that out. Uh, now, also, there's been a, a lot of great uh, Unearthed Arcanas uh, happening recently. Uh, those are playtest documents that the Wizards D&D team puts up for free. PDFs you can download. They have different rules for uh, subclasses. Uh, are the things that are being uh, looked at the most for uh, some of the nine, uh, or I'm sorry, the 12 basic classes that are available right now. Um, one thing that's of interest, last week's was all about psionic subclasses, which introduced a new way of using magic that has to do with uh, mind or, or uh, telepathy, things like that. There's some new feats, some new spells in there, but also how you could integrate that as a new as a subclass option within the class framework that it looks right now. They're very neat, they're very interesting, but the reason why I'm talking all about those now, it, you should download them and then uh, test them out and play and then take the survey when that comes out to let us know what you think. But this mini uh, kind of, shows off what I, how I envision what um, some psionic magic and barrier and shields might look like. This is an Githzerai Anarch. And uh, the Gith have uh, psionic abilities, and this one looks like it is creating a shield that is blocking arrows that are coming in uh, to attack her. And again, I love how WizKids is you know, spending time thinking about the entire scene and not just the actual mini and what's going on. So here's a great pose and a great kind of uh, imagine, imagine, uh, imagineering of what a uh, psionic power or even just a magic spell might look like. I mean, she could be casting shield here as well, uh, but I love it. Very, very cool. Uh, there is, I'm trying to think of some, uh, some really interesting ones that I haven't shown before. Okay, so this one has colors that I hadn't seen before. Um, oh, and this is one of the ones that was mentioned in the little write-up about this. Hmm, Do you, maybe you guys can figure it out from, 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 from this. What do you, what do you think that is? Eh, 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 eh. Damn it! Eh! I... I'm a death's kiss. Creepy, creepy. Oh, I love uh, how it's a floating beholder-esque type creature, but it's got the tentacles having um, some uh, rubby type things on it in there. Ooh, 
Very, very cool. Um, and again, the, the colors are a little bit different from what I've seen in the past uh, for you know all D&D monsters, where you don't really see, it actually matches my red and white shirt. See, like I, I had this all coordinated for you guys. It's, it's, it's for the holidays, right? Can't go wrong there. Um, so yeah, that is available here within this set as well. And let me think of another one to show you. Um, this one is interesting because it looks like a Modron, or at least in my mind, with a kind of mechanical, with the big eye, uh, that type of thing. This is, of course, a large creature, but it's a Marut. A Marut. I don't really know what a Marut is. Is it, is it a Modron? Am I being crazy? You tell me. Um, but the winged kind of whimsical nature as well as that big eye in the center of the torso kind of screams uh, one of those crazy mechanical creatures. Um, and this one is very cool because many, many people have a um, strong reaction to a certain cover of the Dungeon Master's Guide in which a group of adventurers are climbing up a statue uh, and prying out an eye that is has a jewel in it the size of a head of a, a regular human. Um, and here is a miniature of what that statue might look like. The Eidolon uh, is, is, is how it's referred to here. It's an, actually an Eidolon-possessed sacred statue. Is this how you imagine what that, that statue might look like if it was brought to life? Mm. He's even got the eye out there. You can see, uh, see once I get too close, the, the focus doesn't pull. It's trying to focus on me. I, who cares about me? Don't look at my face. Focus on this guy's face. Eh, doesn't work. I know, I was thinking it would be a little bit bigger, um, but I think this is in some ways just the Eidolons, you know, possessing this statue. It's not the actual uh, one from the, um, from that cover itself. Um, okay, so let me show you one more creature. Uh, the this one is for all of you uh, dog lovers out there. Here is a friend, a friend to everyone, the old Shadow Mastiff. Um, he seems like someone I would like to be friends with. Hello, hello, Roof, Roof. It's a very nice poochie. I like him. He's made of shadows. They call him Poochie. Um, so I showed, uh, I guess I gotta make sure I show this entire set here. Um, cause I showed the Spring Aladrin. Boing, 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 boing. Um, Ms. Autumn Aladrin. And here is, because midwinter is coming, the Winter Aladrin. I like this set. I, as a fan of elves, uh, in general, um, seeing very fanciful looking Fae just tickles my, my funny bone very much so. Um, and now I'm trying to find, they said there was one for each season. So we had, uh, the autumn and the spring. I'm looking for summer. Where are you, Summer Aladrin? Here's a Skull Lord. And another Skull Lord. I'm looking, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll find it. I'll find it and I'll show it you guys next time for sure. We need you, Summer. Where are you, Summer? Are you in here, Summer? Maybe I poured them out and they're no longer with us. Pour one out for Summer Aladrin. Yeah, exactly, she's off with Rick and Morty. Uh, all right, I feel like I could play with toys all day, uh, but one thing I wanted to make sure you all were aware, uh, since I've seen a few of you uh, asking about Dice Camera Action here in the chat. Uh, we, this is the time when Dice Camera Action would normally be uh, shown here uh, in, earlier in this year. Um, but I wanted to let you know, since many of you uh, were watching me just because we were waiting for Dice Camera Action, um, 
that we are not continuing with that camera action. It is not going forward. We uh, congratulate the cast on uh, all 141 episodes uh, of wonderful storytelling, and uh, we love them uh, very much. Uh, but we are not continuing, but we are excited about a new show uh, with uh, Dungeon Master Chris Perkins returning. Two cast members you may recognize, uh, well actually all of them you might recognize, um, with Anna Prosser, Nate, uh, Mika Burton, and a, a, a newcomer to the D&D community uh, known as Shady Penguin. Um, you'll find out a lot more about that on Friday at PAX Unplugged. Uh, there is a panel scheduled. It's at 11.30 a.m. Pacific time. We'll be hosting that panel here on Friday. Um, and, uh, and then we'll go right into Dragon Talk uh, from, with me and Shelly speaking to an amazing guest, uh, Jorge Gutierrez who is an animator, a director of uh, animation. Uh, he created the Book of Life uh, from a few years ago, avid D&D fan, so we can't wait to ask him all about that too. Uh, but that's all that's going on. I uh, want to make sure you were all aware. Um, you can find out more at the panel on Friday about Chris Perkins' new show with everyone coming along. Thank you, everyone uh, who is... I've uh, been watching D&D News for so long. We really appreciate it. Uh, the community that has been surrounding Dungeons & Dragons is something that uh, means really something uh, a lot to me. Uh, as I've been saying here, the last for some reason, the last couple of times I've been doing this D&D News has been going on with me going uh, <laughs> off about how amazing this community is. But I, I mean it uh, from, the, from the depths of my heart. Uh, just look at all the money that's been raised for Extra Life and everything going forward uh, is really amazing. So... Uh, we want to continue that, and we're looking forward to that with uh, this, this fantastic new show uh, with, with Chris Perkins behind the Dungeon Master screen once again. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I'll be back next week with more D&D news, sharing all the fun stuff. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Ask me any questions you might have, and uh, I will do my best to get back to you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Bye.